You've probably noticed that John Hancock's signature is by far the biggest on the Declaration of Independence. And to be fair, he was the first one to sign Thomas Jefferson's masterpiece. But still, like, why was it so big? This is a question that historians aren't totally sure about. There's this rumor that he signed it and then he shouted, I guess King George will be able to read that. And there's literally no record confirming it. So I don't know, but imagine that story. Imagine why it would be powerful at a time when Hancock was trying to get delegates to sign that declaration, which by the way, it was an act the British considered treasonous, meaning that you could actually hang for just signing this piece of paper. So like, let's bring in another famous name, Paul Revere, you have heard of him. The silversmith who famously rode out to warn locals, the British are coming. So Hancock, along with his buddy Samuel Adams, was one of those people who Revere warned. So Adams took the advice and he lights out, but Hancock does not. So Revere makes his rounds and he doubles back and he finds Hancock still there, just being so stubborn. And he wants to stay. He's not prepared to stay, but he thinks that he can really add something to the situation, meaning protecting the colonials like stockpile of weapons alongside militiamen who are actually trained to do this. The thing is, Hancock doesn't even have a musket, which Revere pointed out. And he also points out that if the British were to capture Hancock, it would be like serious bragging rights. If you jailed an influential patriot, I mean, who knows what would have happened to the cause. So eventually, Revere gets him to flee. So John Hancock may be best remembered for his conspicuous place on the Declaration, but there's a lot more to this signer than his signature.